Good morning and grand rising family friends. We are here with an amazing episode of the Who Do and Chill podcast. With me, as always, is my beautiful partner in crime, as well as love and light, the one and only Latoya Alexandria. Good morning, Grand Rising. Good light. It is a beautiful Sunday. So bon dimanche. Je suis assisi avec la magnifique Sir Bayo. And we have a wonderful show for you guys today on this um, Sunday. Hoodoo Church Sunday. We have a special guest and I'm so excited about him being here. Thank you so much for that, Toya. So yes, everyone, we do have a very special guest with us today and I am going to introduce him very, very shortly. So today's show is one of our special editions. We don't do Hoodoo Church that much, unfortunately, but when we do, it's always always a very powerful gathering we always have a message that is not only in alignment with our practice but with our lives and just an opportunity for us to share in fellowship with each other we are going to be talking about the magic of the two spirit now this is the second part to our divine masculine series which has been a big hit and i want to just thank everyone who's been listening to all of our listeners in america charlotte you all have been going crazy with the downloads also want to show our love and support to the uk as well as sweden as well we have been getting a lot of downloads from you all i just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to the who and chill podcast but why is this topic so special today why is or why should we be talking about the two spirit or even how it relates to the divine masculine with us today i have an amazing guest someone that i do personally follow on instagram i really really resonate with their spirit i really really love their demeanor and just what they represent as it relates to the divine masculine and the two spirit now some of you are asking me seer what is the two spirit what what is that what are we talking about and we're going to get more into that i'm going to give you guys more history on the two spirit but just to go ahead and open up our show today the term two spirit originated in winnipeg canada in 1990 during the third annual intertribal Native American First Nations Gay and Lesbian Conference. It does come from the Ojibwa word meaning two spirits. In some tribes, male body two spirits were active as healers, medicine persons, grave diggers, undertakers, handling or burying of the deceased, conducted mourning rites, conveyors of traditions and songs nurses during war expeditions they foretold the future conferred lucky names on children or adults in other words they were name givers they wove they made pottery they made beadwork quill work they arranged marriages they made feathers for regalia for dances they were specialized in the skills of games of chance They led scalp dances and fulfilled special functions in connection with the setting up of the central post of the Sundance. Our opening today does come from a beautiful article that I just wanted to just go ahead and quote today. Uh, That is from the Two Spirit from TheGuardian.com. I just wanted to say thank you so much for just allowing us that information to share today as well as RainbowSourcesCentury.org. So where does our guest come into play with this? And excuse me, why is Chan the musical mystic so important to talk to today? Well, Chan Robinson, aka Chan the Musical Mystic, is a Southern educator. 
He is also a spiritual worker and hoodoo practitioner, born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina. Chen is the leader and founder of Pure Dove Spiritual Gifts, an online community built around love and spirituality. Chen offers a wide range of services and products such as spiritual readings, crystal talismans, intention candles, and more. One of his premier products is his homemade rose water. And while it is great for your hair and skin, it is also hand blessed with the intention to cleanse, heal, and protect the mind, body, and spirit. Chen has been practicing Kudu intentionally for a number of years and has a serious passion for progressing and educating the Black community on rich history and culture of African American spiritual practices. The Hoodoo and Chill podcast will return after this short ad break. make major decisions without knowing the outcome beforehand? Would you like to know where your relationship is headed or what the future holds in store for you? Sir Bale and I want to assist you in making all the right decisions so that you may live your best life. Are you seeking a new career? Does your love life need insight? Or maybe you want to connect with your ancestors or past loved ones. The realm of divination holds all the answers to your future. Allow us to use our psychic abilities, bone reading, cardamancy, tarot, and mediumship to uncover the answers to your future. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com under classes and services to book your appointment today. Your spirit guides are waiting to speak to you. That's hoodooconjurerootwork.com to uncover your destiny today. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and open up the floor and allow our guest of the day before we start our interview, Chan, the musical mystic, to introduce himself. What's going on, guys? Hey, Toya. Hey, Seer. Um, it's, so good. it's so good to talk to you guys. As, uh, again, um, I'm so excited to be here, first and foremost, because um, I have been a fan and following you guys and watching you guys or listening to you guys. And so it's, it's really surreal right now to even, you know, be in this room and chat with you all. So I'm really excited um, about this opportunity. Um, I am Chan the Musical Mystic. Um, I, I was coined that because I play in various bands and um they always call me like the mystical one of, of everybody that I play with. And so they, <laughs> so it kind of got coined a few years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, I have been practicing intentionally um, since in 2017. Um, and I come from a, a rich background of it. My grandfather was a hoodoo man um, back in the days where they didn't even say hoodoo, you know? um it was it was seer like like yourself or or prophet um and so that so i coming from that background and, st- and you know fighting it for so long and finally doing it now uh it's it just it's breathtaking um two spirited i'm so excited to talk about that because not a lot of talk, not a lot of people talk about it when it comes to spiritual roles and so um as a two spirited male I'm excited to talk about how we use both energies, and I'm sure you're going to go into that a little bit later. Um, but I'm just happy to be here. I'm just so excited to be here. Well, Chan, we are happy to have you, and we are going to get this is going to get juicy, guys, later on once we start interviewing Chan. First, because I want every, I want us all to be on the same accord. I want to open up the floor, Toya, and I want to open up the floor and just discuss exactly what the two spirit is so that when you guys leave here, you know me, I am a historian first and foremost. I want you to have the history. I want when you are sitting in a room of people for you to know and be knowledgeable as to where the origins of this derive from. Now, this term is 100% indigenous native American. And when I say that this term is originated from the Americas, I want you all to have a more broader mindset as to what indigenous Americans are and what first people, meaning 
prior to colonization, prior to the watering down of the original man, what first people looked like, what they felt like, what their energy was and what their skin color was as well. So I want you to have an open mindset because this relates back to many of us because many of us are associated with indigenous American blood. I know for sure that I am. So one thing that I found in my research and just in my knowledge of this is that I want to first give a big shout out to the LGBT community, shout out to Pride Month, but I also want to say that this concept of two spirit as it relates to traditional indigenous American culture was not sexualized, okay? Meaning it didn't have anything necessarily to do with whom you were sexually attracted to, but it was a term that more so related to identity, if you're taking notes, write that down, as well as social status, okay? And there are so many doors to this and so many layers to this that we are going to discuss today. But the first one I want you guys to understand is that these individuals had a purpose. Okay. There was not a lot of them. So please don't, we're not going to fetishize this because I think people misconstrue what is gay, lesbian, and bi with what is too spirited. People have always had same sex relationships and never identified as anything. But the specific identification as it relates to two spirit was something that was totally different. Okay. You had a role, there was a place for you. And most importantly, it had to do with your spirit and also your ability to connect with both energies. Okay. These people were leaders as it related to spirituality, as it related to ritual, as it related to ceremony, as it related to luck. OK, and I wanted you all to reference that. OK, look, because we work so much of our magic as it relates to hoodoo, conjure and root work with luck. So these individuals had a role and they had a purpose. There's also a sense of practicality that was relation that was in relation with the two spirit, meaning that. People used you not only because of your religious or your magical capabilities, but because, let's be honest, we're a society of people. Every person matters. So if you're a man that can go to war with us as well as come back into the community and cook and sew, you are resourceful. Okay? So that's another word I want you to write down, that they were kept and esteemed because they were resourceful. Now, there is a darker side of this, and Toy, I wanted you to come in on this too, because not every person that was placed in this position or this role was was it wasn't just automatically venerated. There were some where if you were not deemed worthy to be a man, or if you could not pass your test of manhood, then you would have to live amongst society as a woman. You know, um, I would like to first say, welcome, Chan. So happy to have you here. So excited about you um, coming on the show and speaking with us about this particular topic um, and about what you do. I saw your Instagram page. If you guys have not checked out his Instagram page, we will give you that information a little bit later. But he is amazing. So welcome. So, yes, dear, when when you brought this topic to me, there's so many great things that we can say about two-spirited people, about the history of it, um, where it comes from, where it derives from, how important two-spirited people are to our community, to the spiritual community, as well as just general population. However... We wanted to make sure that you understood, and I am going to say it just flat out like this because it needs to be said, it needs to be talked about. And here on Hoodoo Conjure Root Work and on Hoodoo and Chill, we always try to be as honest and open as we can about a particular subject. Just because you are gay 
or lesbian or bisexual does not mean that you are a two-spirited person. Do you hear me? Just you, just because you are gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender does not mean you are a two-spirited person. Understand that these people who are considered two-spirited people in their community, when Sears spoke about healers and medicine people and people who gave names and people who brought luck and things of that nature, these two-spirited people were not seen as the way that we see the LBGTQIA community right now. A lot of them did not even want you to know that they were too spirited. They were very quiet about it. Okay. They were not uh, out here. They didn't have as much pride as we have today, which thank God for that. Thank God that we do have pride, but they were quiet about it. It was something that was sacred. It was something that was not talked about very often, but people knew about and they knew where to go to have this work done. Understand also, as Sears said, when certain males or females would go through rites of passage, um, they would have to show their worthiness and what they could do to actually um, bring in to the community. And if they did not pass those rites of passage, they lost that ability to call themselves a man or a woman. So if you are too, a, a two-spirited person, Yes, you have both responsibilities of a male and a, a female. You can do, you know, both roles. But just because sexually you identify as, like I said before, anybody in the LBGTQIA community, that does not make you a two-spirited person. And also, these people were shunned. A lot of times. Sierra and I are talking about the good in the community. We're talking about the natives and the indigenous people that use these two spirited people. But then in a lot of the communities, they were also shunned. If they found out that you were openly gay, lesbian, you were shunned by the community. You could not have a place of a hierarchy whatsoever in that community. So again, we want to make sure that you understand that this is indigenous and it's, and we'll get into this later. It's, it's disturbing sort of, I guess I can use that word disturbing that even in today in our spiritual community, a lot of people who are two spirited people or consider themselves two spirited people, People don't want to work with them. If you are two-spirited, call yourself a two-spirited spiritualist, people don't want to work with you for that reason. So we're bringing this to light. And I guess I say all that to say this. We don't want to give that misrepresentation or misconception because we don't want people going out here using, first of all, the word that is two-spirited, that is sacred to the indigenous people, using that word and saying, I'm too spirited because I'm gay or because I'm bi or because I'm lesbian, because that is not the truth. The Hoodoo and Chill podcast will return after this short ad break. Hey, are you enjoying the show? If so, don't forget to follow Hoodoo and Chill on Apple and Spotify and leave us a five-star rating. Tell us what you love about the show in the reviews. We love to hear from you. To keep this free content on air, please support the show by sending a donation of love using one of the donation links in the descriptions. Donations keep our podcasts alive and also give us the ability to enhance our content. We graciously thank you for your support. Now, back to the show.
So before we open up the floor for Chan to go ahead and just start, you know, elaborating on himself and his work, I do want to say that the term two-spirited amongst the indigenous community now has been embraced as an umbrella term to distinguish gay, trans, lesbian, the entire LGBTQ community. We today are speaking from a traditional point of view as it relates to this topic. So we did just want to shed love and light on that as well to our brothers and sisters of our indigenous uh, communities here in the Americas um, that are LGBTQ and do consider themselves two-spirited. We are speaking today, however, from a traditional point of view. Now, for those of you that are just now joining, you are coming in at an amazing time. We are now about to turn the floor over to our guest speaker of today, Chan, the musical mystic. So my first question to Chan, and just again, thank you for giving us your time today. Would you please just open up about yourself and just your experience as a two-spirited male worker? Voodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for. And whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal? that has this bag attached to it. Are we doing that? First of all, yes, everything y'all said beforehand. The, the term does get tossed around. And I think that for me, I realized that I was a two-spirited worker when I can, when I could invoke both sides of spirit, um, and I think that that is something that Toya was was very, very much so leaning towards when she was when she was saying that just because you identify a, a, in the community doesn't necessarily mean that you are two spirited. Because I also want to say that they were heterosexual two spirited, um, and I will also say that two spirited individuals were often alone, you know, like because they were shunned. So this has so much less to do about what you like sexually and more about the spirit that you can um, allow to mount you. Um, and I think that when I could work protection um, and invoke a very dominant spirit, it literally within my body and within the talismans and within the, the, the candle, or within the ritual, um, and then I can also invoke a sense of healing and softness and that spirit of, 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 of divine femininity. Um, when I could invoke both of those equally throughout life, um, as well as in ritual, I think that's when I realized that that's what that was. But as a child, I could invoke that spirit um, so naturally. And it often came. It often came out in ways that was shunned. And I, I'm so happy that Toya brought that up because growing up, this was a thing that was seen as some, from some as a spiritual mystical thing. As others, it was a deterrent. Like, don't do that. Um, so the the spirit, for example, the feminine spirit would show in my walk. I couldn't control my walk. I couldn't control how I, you know, glided through. But sometimes that spirit would jump on me and then I would feel that. And then I would get told, oh, don't stand like that. Hold your body this way. And then in other ways, the masculine side would jump on me in sports. Uh, you wouldn't be able to even tell I had a different gait than other boys. And so I think that growing up, that battle was so difficult for me. But once I accepted the call to do this work, I think that's when I kind of aligned and brought balance to both spirits. So I, I think the biggest thing for me is like two spirited workers, when as we're working, um, we know what side of spirit, the sun or the moon side, we know which side of spirit we need to work with. Does your second spirit have a name? And I ask this because, and this is for our listeners out here, 
I want you all to understand, those of you that are two spirit, to understand that like how your second spirit will manifest itself or materialize will be different for each and every last one of you. So whether yours has a name or not, that's not neither right nor wrong. I guess I'm now making this personable because I love the way that you elaborated on that, just being able to invoke both sides of spirit and being able to have the feminine spirit mount you. I think that that is important, especially those of you who are working with deities, right? And this is why the two spirit was so important as it relates to historical culture, because a lot of deity work was done with these practices, okay? And in a lot of traditional practices, only certain women can work with certain female spirits. Um, if you were too masculine, or even if you just were a man, period, or identified as a man, that this was out of your lane, this was out of your territory, as it also related to male spirits as well. So then you have this person or these persons in one body that has the ability, as Chen so beautifully elaborated, to invoke both spirits. This is where the esteem of the two spirit comes into play because without you, we can't call upon the rain. Without you, we cannot call upon the sun. Without you, we cannot call upon mother earth. So I want you all to not only embrace the history, but the vitalness of these people as well. I had to tap in because I just thought what you said was just so eloquently put and you just, I'm, I'm back here just like cheering for you right now. And I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on what Sears said in terms of you invoking both spirits. And that's what we are talking about, people who, you know, everyone who may have just come in when I said out loud that just because you are, you know, um, gay, lesbian, or bi, that you are not too spirited, Chan put that in perspective so well that being able to invoke both of those spirits is what makes you a two-spirited person. And as Sears said, a lot of the deities and some of the spirits that we work with, for instance, I work in voodoo. Most of you guys know that Dantor is a hermaphrodite, okay? And a lot of people don't understand that a lot of these deities are also two-spirited. So if you have a deity that only works with women, but you have a two-spirited person who's able to invoke that spirit, that is something absolutely tremendous. That is special. All right. So, and I, and then also I just wanted to encourage uh, you that if you are of one gender and you no longer want to identify with that gender and you want to identify with a different one, you know, if you're a male, you want to now identify as a woman, understand, understand that once you do that and you let go and try to leave all of whatever is male behind you, that, and I hate to say it like this, you are shunning that second spirit. You no longer want to deal with the spirit inside of you that may be female or male, rather. You want to get rid of all of the masculine. You no longer want that. And that's, again, why we say just because you identify as or you have sex with does not make you a two-spirited person. I'm sorry. I just had to interject. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I actually know another two-spirited worker who shuns their other um, their their other spirit. Um, and they are a practitioner of Ifa. And they, they and I were talking about why they can go by they, them, but they don't, and they go by they, them, and they can go by she, but they don't want to go by he. And I've known them for a few years, and I was like, you know, you're shunning your divine masculine energy when you could be utilizing both spirits equally when that's already in you. And so I just want to say that, like, 
you know, that whole process, though, is which, which, is, which is tied to what Seer was talking about in a minute. That whole process of figuring that out takes years <laughs> to, you know, to, to deal with, oh, because I went through a period of shunning certain, uh, you know, in parts of myself um, and, and really like suppressing the energy and not using it to my fullest extent. And so how was that related to what Seer, Seer you said, um, does my second spirit have a name? And actually, no, mine does not. Um, and I, I think that because learning self is a process, that may be something I dig deeper into. Um, and, you know, to see if that's something that will come of this journey. Um, I think up until this point, um, I haven't seen both spirits as separate. Um, I've seen the spirits as being two faces of one coin. Very similar to how the sun and the moon are literally, in, in my eyes, they are two different things, but they're literally the same. Because without both of them, we, our existence wouldn't be here. Um, and so in my eyes, you know, it's both divinity. So for me, it's just two parts of of what's already in me. So I don't, I never thought to give it a second name or I've never thought to even ask if my other spirit wanted a second name. And so that's why I say that it would be an interesting journey to kind of dig within self uh, further and kind of research that. But to answer your question, no. <laughs> I love how this is just so different for everybody because we all have different journeys and our journeys will just unfold in its own way for every last one of you and one of the best things that i love about what you just said was how you said that they were two sides to one coin and it just made up one whole person and the truth is what you said is the blueprint of every single two-spirited person that those two spirits the divine masculine the divine feminine they are two pieces that make the whole you the spirits are separate and then the body that withholds them or the vessel that does make up this wholeness our next question is how did you achieve balance or do would you say that you are uh balanced right now or just what was that journey like acknowledging that there are two spirits here and how did you were you able to just package them into just one beautiful package the spirit just came through with something um that is very important that is very sensitive um topic and right now i'm talking to our feminines i'm talking to our feminines who feel like they cannot go to a masculine for protection or for help or they may have been traumatized in some way by a masculine. Therefore, they have lost trust in masculines in terms of spirituality or sometimes even friendship. Two-spirited individuals are so important to us. Those of us who feel like we cannot go to a straight masculine for help or for spiritual guidance because whatever it may be, whether it be trauma, whether it be um, not being comfortable, whether it just not knowing how to, to act or behave around a masculine. When you have a two-spirited person, and like Seer so eloquently again said, that is so well packaged, like Chan, who is so approachable and who is will welcome you with open arms and embraces both of those spirits. That is why, again, two-spirited people are so important to us because now we can come to you we can come to you, someone who is able to embrace, who is able to be mounted by, who is able to show us what a divine masculine is because this person walks 
side by side with both spirit. There is a comfort in knowing that you are out there and that you are available to us. Yes. Um, I had chills when you were talking because um, everything you said was true. Um, one thing that I was thinking the whole time is we have the ability to hold that space. We have the ability to create that space, that safe space. Um, Seer said something. We were we were chatting the other day, and Seer said, "I bet you have cried in front of your your clients in your re in your readings." And I and I was like, I bust out laughing because I was like, "Yes, of course, <laughs> of course, I've cried. They've cried. We've cried. Yeah." Uh, and that goes directly to that space, right? I've had clients who have dealt with some serious traumatic stuff, and you know. I've been able to be that, to invoke that feminine energy to make them comfortable with, you know, a male, a male worker. Um, so that right there was, oh my goodness, that so true. It gave me chills. Um, Seer, you also, you asked, how do I, um, you know, what brought me to that balance? Uh, and I think that's really interesting that you use that word. Um, because I actually just came out with a balance candle. <laughs> shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> but, um, and a friend of mine asked, like, that's so interesting, a balance candle. And I was, because, and, I, and I said, because so many of us seek that balance um, throughout life. And I think that what brought me, to answer your question, what brought me to this feeling of balance that I have today is truly overcoming life's experiences. Um, Things that I went through, when you, things that I went through, I had to use one spirit. And then it brought me to a season where I had to use the other spirit. And then it brought me to a season where I had to use both of them combined. And I think that is what brought me here today. I think when I went through my first heartbreak, right? I think that was when my divine feminine spirit took a huge hit, a huge hit. Um, and then my divine masculine spirit had, you know, got time to shine. Um, and then, so I, I use that as an example that throughout experiences of life, um, I've learned to tap into different things. Um, the loss of family members, you tap into different energies. Um, you know, my car got stolen in, in, in uh, a year ago and I had to do some work to get to get it back and i did what kind of car that was, was it? a whole different spirit i had to no, just, oh what uh, we're not uh, I, knew, oh. I, I don't just I'm just curious what kind of car was it you know <laughs> it was okay so a kia soul told you i told you <laughs> i told you those cars are cursed i told you Toy ah, got oh spoke. my god wait chan what color was your kia it was silver my kid was green and it got broken into and stolen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's because y'all ancestors, y'all don't listen to me when I tell y'all. Y'all ancestors don't want y'all driving them. <laughs> don't listen to me. Sorry. Ah, but yeah, I had to invoke a certain spirit. And so I think just, you know, life's challenges function as, um, you know, lessons. They function as different stages of your life's initiation, if you will. Um, and so I think that, that, like, that's what brought me the balance. I've had to utilize those spirits. I had to utilize that energy and I had to become, more importantly, that energy. And I think that that's the part that gave me chills is that when I realized that I had to become that energy to make it through that season. Um, so I got jumped in 2015, um, something I don't really talk about a lot because it was a it was a hate crime. It was a um, situation where they picked up on my divine feminine energy um, and my divine masculine energy literally had to take over or I would have not been here today to to, to talk. Um, and I'm so fortunate that I'm I was blessed with access to both because some people are not blessed with access to both there there are there are men males born cisgendered men who are have more access to feminine energy and that and, you know and that just 
And that just is. And it's not because they, they want to. They just, I mean, that's just, they just have a feminine spirit on them. And so I'm fortunate that I was able to tap into that divine sun masculine energy and, you know, and protect myself. Um, and I'm a proponent of everyone finding a level of balance. That's why I even created that candle um, is because I think that we all need to experience um, measures of divine masculine and measures of divine feminine energy. We all need a relationship with both spirits. Um, and so to answer your question, like I said, my life's journey is what brought me those balances. And I, and I push everybody and all of my, all of my clients, all of my friends, I tell them we all need that balance. Get in touch with your feminine side as well as your masculine side. Know what that feels like. Cause it may not be too spirited, like in the sense that you know we are seer because we we invoke both of those spirits so it may not be that but we all got a little bit of both energies in us um and so i tell people to get to know that spirit in you because you never know when you have to draw on that relationship i love this i love this 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 is really 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 just such a just a beautiful enlightening topic and chan once again i want to thank you for just being here for those of you that are just now tuning in we are now in the midst of our interview with chan the musical mystic who is just giving us experiences on his life and his journey as a two-spirited worker who walks in a male-dominated form I didn't mean to use male dominated, but uh, masculine form, but he is a two spirited worker. So back to, I guess, the originalness of this topic is when we were talking about tradition and things of that nature. I'm so glad that Chan opened up to us and did shed some light on the dangers as well as the other side of being a two-spirited individual back to what i was saying about uh just the historicalness of this a lot of people don't know that when christopher columbus first landed here not landed here but when he arrived in the americas that they don't like to talk about what he saw amongst the natives um when he got here and this is where we talk about i guess sexuality and in the original cultures of the indigenous, you know, sexuality was very, very open. Bisexualness or sexual fluidness was, it was just a thing. It was what it was. People barely wore clothes um, to share your wife or to engage with multiple partners. That was just a part of the culture. So when these colonizers and these priests and these clergymen arrive to these shores of this tropical land you see all of these beautiful brown and black people just walking around and they're naked and they are just so sexually open with themselves they were disgusted they were disgusted and what we don't talk about is that during the colonization period of the americas many of the two-spirited people individuals or anyone that i did identify as gay trans um even people that were dual gendered you know physically from birth they were either burned at stakes or they were thrown alive to dogs to be eaten alive. This is a true story. There are even depictions and paintings of them doing this, that they really did detest the sexual openness of the indigenous American culture. Um, that happened as well on the shores of the mainland of America as well, that when they got over here and when they did find the individuals that were too spirited, uh, that they killed them. And the historians, uh, a lot of the people who explored these lands, I can't even think of his name right now, and, and forgive me for not being able to quote this off the top of my head, but I remember there was a particular explorer of the land, and he was saying that among every single native tribe that he comes across, there is a two-spirited individual, that there was uh, some type of, there were same-sex relationships taking place amongst these tribes, that this was a thing going on. 
So as we see the hate and the demonization of the two spirit, it really is a mindset of colonization. You know, whereas these individuals may not have been treated the best even in the, amongst their own communities, where even in their own communities there was some shunning, not amongst the level as it was when the settlers got here. You know, a lot of these individuals individuals became martyrs to their own religions, to their own faith. You have to also, and this is where I feel like the whole Christianity, um, Christianity and, and associating LGBT queerness, homosexuality with anything demonic, because you have to remember, imagine these priests arriving to this land and you're seeing the two-spirited individuals but not only that they are the ones who are leading ritual they are the ones working the temples and the altars and they are the ones who are being venerated as if they are living gods okay we don't talk about that in some of these cultures these individuals were lit literally worshipped they were the living manifestation of a certain deity so in my personal opinion, I think this is where we begin to see the intersection of homosexuality, queerness, LGBTQ being labeled as demonic because when they arrived in the Americas, it was correlated with indigenous spiritual practices. Toya. That right there, which you just said. Okay. And to piggyback off of that, what you just said, Seer. Not only were they seeing these people then as demonic, they saw this as some type of illness then, right? So now we have something that we need to heal. We have something, you're sick. We need to cast this out. We need to cast you out. And that's where a lot of this came from in history. And people are still doing that to this day. We all know that, all right? Chan and Sear just talked about um, experiences, Chan's experience with uh, actual hate crime understand that being a two-spirited person is 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 a challenge it is a challenge and it can be scary all right it can be scary because there are real people out here that think that th there's a problem with this let's just put it this way a lot of religions and cultures have a problem with this they have a problem with two-spirited people holding any type of prestigious position or having anything to do with the spiritual community, period. And I'm just going to say it like this. It, today, two-spirited people will be uh, looked over by people who are actually seeking spiritualists, who actually need help. They need help. They want help. They're looking. But because they feel this person is two-spirited, they feel that this person... It's, it's, it's more of a sickness and an ailment and something that needs to be cured. Therefore, they will look over them and not even use them when this is what some, one of, some of the most mystical, magical, powerful healers out there. This still holds true today. I see it all the time. I see it in allies. The allies who are in our spiritual community right now, hoodoos and voodoos and uh, everything across the board, Ifa, people don't want to work with them because they are two-spirited individuals. It's a real thing. And that's why this topic to me is so important to talk about. It's so important important for me to be involved in, even though I am a cis woman, it's just what two-spirited people bring to our practice, to our world overall is something mystical and magical in itself. And it needs to be known. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be put out there. And we need more people like Seer and Chan to step up and don't be afraid to come out. If you are trying to be a spiritualist or you're thinking about being a spiritualist or you're thinking about practicing, but you are too spirited and you are afraid for some reason, please don't be. I encourage you today to step up and step out because we need you. And there is something that you bring to the spiritual community and to this world overall that we can't do on our own.
on, I don't know, just a day in the life of Chan as a worker, what you provide. If anybody here listening wanted to reach out to you, how can you impact their life or how can some of your uh, products or any of your services impact their lives? We're going to leave the floor to you. Um open for readings um i like yourself i do um 45 minute to 50 minute sessions and i say sessions because um to get any kind of spiritual work or anything done i say come either you know chat with me sit with me um because we, the session is important we start with meditation um many people don't know but i um speaking of divine masculine um, one of my starts was martial arts. I started when I was six years old. So I've been meditating literally since I was six years old. So all of my sessions start with meditation. And I think that's something that has really, really, really impacted many of, of, of my clients, my family members. Um, so meditation is something that we start with. And then we go into a deep dive in conversation. Um, um, and so one of my readings are, I always say something that I will do before I do anything else. However, um, cleanses are something that I love. As I think that's the balance of divine masculine and divine feminine. I love cleanses. And so I have the ability uh, to help with head washes, foot washes, hand washes. Um, I'm actually um, starting a class um, to show others how to do um, foot washes, especially where I'm from, South Carolina. It's really, really big, popular um, for many different denominations of people to do foot washes um and so that's something that i'm really passionate about because we all need our steps blessed <laughs> um but bes besides that i um go by the musical mystic because i like to use my music ability to heal um and so i'm a music teacher for those who don't know i teach in a public school in south carolina um and so what i what i do is i like to use music in many forms to assist my healing um and so even within my rose water there are certain songs that i will sing to my rose water or certain um tunes and and prayers that go into that so it can be a, an effective healing mechanism and so you asked me what the day in the life of chan is is using all of my abilities to heal the people around me um and so that's probably like my i guess my biggest goal uh, we were we were chatting the other day and you were like you know what's your end goal and i think um when i dedicated myself to this path it was to be a light for those around me in whatever capacity that could be um and I, and that holds true today um so all of my products all of my services you know everything from my crystal talismans to my readings to my rose water is all purpose to heal because that's my ultimate goal as a two-spirited worker. And I think that is the the one thing I would say about two spirits is I meant to say it earlier is the divine masculine and divine feminine come together to create. Um, and I think for me, that's the biggest thing I wish to create um, is that sense of healing. This has been such a dynamic room. This has been such a dynamic show. And I'm just so glad once again, Shan, that you decided to just come in today. Bless us with your time, bless us with your energy, and just elaborate on this subject that I feel like a lot of people need more knowledge on. Now, once again, just because I do like to stand with the indigenous Americans, it if you are not a person of this descent, this term is not necessarily for you. However, we do embrace you for uh, learning the history on this and the historical points and views of this. This has just been such an amazing topic today. So I just wanted to just leave you all with just love and light, of course, and just a word to our two-spirited individuals that you are needed you are necessary your power is divine and that it's in your bloodline to be in this work to be in this practice to have a place of reverence in this practice we need you and spirit has their hands on you i just wanted to thank chan it has been such a pleasure having you on the show today i absolutely love this you guys this gentleman is someone, if, if you are looking for a spiritualist in the community, as I said, I spoke to the feminine. I spoke 
just briefly about feminine trauma and you are looking for someone to connect with for some guidance and you're not very comfortable with, um, you know, a, a cis male, reach out to Chan or reach out to Seer. Chan's link is above Pure Dove Spiritual Gifts. Connect with him. Um, I want to, again, encourage all of you to spirited two-spirited and I say it again I don't mean that just because you are gay lesbian queer um that you are two-spirited truly two-spirited people step up and step out we need you and we love you and we embrace you I just want to thank you both thank you Toya thank you Seer for uh, you no know, welcoming welcoming me um this has been so awesome this has been fun and i just thank you guys for holding space for me on a platform that i follow and that i um enjoy so much so and not just thank you for holding space for me thank you for holding safe space for us for the spirituals the intuitives the workers um we need this space and we need the work that you guys are doing so thank you so much well, I just want to give a big round of applause and thank you to Chan once again for sharing his time with us and to all of our listeners out there, to those of you who have been on a two-spirited path and maybe you're advanced in your walk, I just want to tip my hat to you and send you my love. Or maybe to our younger listeners, because we see you too who are at the beginning stages of your journey and you're still trying to find that balance. I pray that you find that balance, but I also pray a prayer of protection over you. As you go out into the streets, as you go out into the world, that you are covered, wherever you are, that you are covered, your ancestors will keep you safe, away from any discrimination, away from any hate crimes, away from any malicious intent. May I ask that it be turned back and fueled times five on the perpetrators and nothing shall touch the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I ask that today, each of you that are listening that you step out not only into a spirit of light but also into a bubble of protection hear my words my people you are shielded walk in that and to those of you who may have been through something in trauma you are stronger than your trauma you survived we need you we need your stories we need you as a pillar of confidence that no matter what life throws it of, we can make it through. I just want to remind each and every last one of you that you are strong. You know that you are powerful. And if you don't, I'm reminding you, you are blessed. Your bloodline is divine. You come from the best of the best doctors, lawyers, your ancestors were magicians. Some of them were priests. Some of them were medicine women. Some of them were teachers, gardeners, farmers, so on and so forth. As you step out today with your bubble of protection, you step out into a golden ray of prosperity. May your hands be like the Midas touch and everything that you put your hands on may have materialized in front of you as if it were gold. I send you out today in love and light, my people. And with that, we release you into the atmosphere. Thanks for listening to the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. To keep this free content on air, please use the link in the description to send a donation of love.